Legend of Total War here, and today we've got a saving a disaster situation where we've actually got a lot of options available to us, and the player here is going up against a legitimate doom stack of corn here. So Scarbrand, gen generally speaking, the AI is programmed to try to incorporate some variety into their army. Still, usually in the later stages of the campaign, recruit better units, obviously. Uh, but they usually don't try to spam one unit in their army. However, that's kind of what's happened here. And Scarbrand has recruited a Soul Grinder Doomstack. And he said that he just couldn't manage to win the battle with this army here. Now, I'm going to fight this battle with this army here. But I also saw that he does have some options available to him with a bit of know-how. Now, I'm not going to do the thing that I'm going to show you. But I just want to show you so you can... If you're in this situation, you've got tools at your disposal. Right. Now, Boris is over here. We're not going to use Boris's army to fight this army. But if we did, it would be quite easy. This army here is way stronger than the the Ice Guard Doomstack. Even though they're both anti-large, the Warbear Riders are just a cut above the... Uh, the ice guard in terms of dealing with these kind of units they're just way better anti-large now if you have a look here it looks as though we can't actually reach him so i'm going to show you a, just show you an exploit i'm not, not going to bring him all the way over here uh I'll show you a movement exploit that you can do in this situation now there is the ambush dance move bug if you're aware of that one that's where you go into ambush dance when you just over the uh, move points to go into ambush dance and you come out of it and you get given additional move points now that only works when you have about 140 or more total move points so you can see there he has 127 which means at the moment boris cannot do the uh the ambush stance move bug but there is another move bug that he can do the recruit and this sorry the recruit um move bug that one is where you have to be in friendly territory you have to be able to I recruit something you move your maximum movement, you recruit something, and then you just cancel it, and you get given some extra movements. Now, you got to keep in mind some things. You cannot move, like, infinitely if you have heroes in your army. So, eventually this would reach a point where we couldn't go any further with it, and you have to detach the heroes. Now, I just wanted to showcase that one. I didn't want to actually do it, but we can use this army here to fight Scarbrand. We could do it. But like I said, I'm not going to. Now, if the guy watches the video and then decides, Ooh, I'm going to do that instead. Cool. Th he now knows what to do. But what I'm going to do is show you how to beat this army with this one here. Now, I tested to see what the order resolve said if Boris showed up without the heroes. And it gave a close victory in order resolve. This is on legendary difficulty. So we can actually beat that in order resolve with uh, Boris's army. However... Uh, like I said, we're going to do it with the more difficult situation so that you guys can sh uh, show you guys how to deal with this sort of situation when dealing with a single entity monster spam. We also need to... Oh, he doesn't have the, the blood letter summons. Nice. All right, well, let's jump in here and I'll show you how to do it. Now, I think we're still going to take like a ton of damage, but we have to keep a bunch of things in mind. Their damage output is going to remain more or less at full strength as long as they don't take casualties. So what we need to do is rather than damage every single one of the soul grinders, we need to focus on killing them somewhat one at a time. Um, also, if we can lure some of them away from the main force, that would be ideal. If we have a look here, kataran has got 80 speed. 80 speed, 75 speed... 36, 49. Okay. Uh, definitely would be good if these ones were on bareback, but they're not. Alright, where are we going to set up? Try to take as high ground as possible. We definitely don't have time to, to run back. Bounce power's not in our favor. I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, normally... In a regular sort of situation, I'd put the heroes up front to try to tank, but those soul grinders are going to kill single entities really quickly. Now, a lot of people, what they'll do is set up lines like this, or even checkerboard formation. But in this sort of situation here, against single entity monsters, checkerboard formation is not the way to go. Okay? We need to go 
completely disorganized formation. All right? That is where we go spaghetti line as much as possible. And by spaghetti line, I mean, like, as long as possible. Stretch them out as, lo as wide as they'll go, and then spread out. Okay? Like this. This is, like, extreme checkerboard formation. The main purpose of this is to prevent one of their soul grinders from pinning down multiple archer units. Okay? We outnumber them. We've got more archers than they do soul grinders, right? So, uh, we kind of want to avoid the trees. I know that they get a reduced melee attack in the trees, but it also means that our ice guards won't shoot very well. So, if a soul grinder is attacking this unit here, for one thing, it's fighting back, but then we've got units at the back that are able to shoot it, whereas if you go too tight, they'll punch through and just try to get, like, multiple units fighting each other. So, what you want to do is just spread it out really wide. Really, really wide. Like this. It just makes it as difficult as possible for them to pin our units down. See, checkerboard formation is largely a melee infantry or even a melee cavalry anti-melee infantry formation. This formation here is anti-single entity monster formation. Because the main thing that what they do is they just punch through and try to pin a uh, bunch of units down so they can't shoot. Now the wizard and this one's not going to be able to do much. What we're going to do with Katarin, I want her to go around here and for one first thing get her to slow them down with her um, ice sheet magic and then try to get a few uh, soul grinders to chase after her. Oh, I got an idea as well. Why don't we put these two heroes that actually don't have that much fighting potential. I'll put them in the forest here. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll run them out this way. They're just not going to be able to fight or support at all. But if they could just get some of those units to run away from here, that'd be really good. So just be as annoying and distracting as possible. Okay, everyone has their orders. Get moving. Okay, now, with Katarin, what are they doing? Oh, they're taking a defensive position. Uh, they won't as soon as these ones here shoot them a bit. Yeah, they'll come at us soon. It'd be much better if we focus on one of them. Great, it didn't listen to me. See, so yeah, barely doing any damage to us. Don't worry about it. Kind of like Necrofex, or low range Necrofex Colossus, these shots, but they don't do very much damage to single entities because they just can't hit it, but they're very good against infantry. I wonder if we could have actually wasted all of their ammunition just with Katarin. Alright, if they're, if they're changing things around, don't worry about that. Now, I just want to iterate, or reiterate, that I could have absolutely smashed this army with Boruses. Oh, they do have the summons. Right. Well, that's good that they went out this way. Really, really good. That's a waste. Okay, good. We've got their attention. And we just want to be as annoying as possible to them. In fact, they're coming in through this forest here is not that big of a deal. And get Katarin to go around its rear. Try to get as many of them to hang back as possible. Don't underestimate the value of confusing your enemy with weird tactics. See, what you do is you use units that just had no real ability to dish out damage to the enemy, that are fast, and get them to be in positions that seem vulnerable. Sometimes leaving vulnerabilities in your army is a good thing because the AO will, AO will like, try to go for it, but it's a trap. I'm not going to let them take this easily at all. They're not even going for this one, but maybe they'll put the summons there. We've also got this one here. Trees in a bit. 
So we got a bunch of them distracted. Alright, I'm gonna pop this down real soon. There we go. Okay, we need to get them distracted. That's it. See how that one's going backwards? That's what we want to see. Also, by going in that wide formation, it makes their shots less likely to hit. So actually using them as missile units. Okay, and we'll slow them down. Oh, not the range. Good, the summon's coming in over here. So yeah, all of these units over here are distracted by Katarin. This is going to be useless against single entities. And just have Katarin be as annoying as possible. Without actually sending her into melee. Just have them chase us. Good. Damage is pretty minimal so far. The super wide formation is really working for us. Okay, they are about to come through. Slow them down. Try to get as many of them as possible to be distracted by Katarin. And look. They're doing it. They're sending one unit over here to deal with units that just have no fighting potential for us. That's really, really distracting there. What are you doing? Oh, you didn't get Katarin Summon? Oh, it was only ranked 23. What the f- Oh, right. It's I was going to say, how is she only ranked 23 at this point? All right, let's try to preserve this unit. Keep it at the rear. Send somebody else to take the hit. But Bounce of Powers, we've absolutely annihilated them in this battle here. Look at them, they've got units all over the place. We completely dismantled their formation while our, ours is... Okay, that one's probably going to die. Alright, can we get everyone focusing on Scarbrand, please? That would be really good. Oh. Causes Rampage. Yeah, he hits really hard, but we're focus firing on him. And he's going to go down pretty quick. Oh, hang on, hang on. This unit here is... Yeah, it's wiped out. If we had, if one more had survived, it would have uh, we lived. But, you know, you can just replace it. Better than losing the entire army. Yeah, since it's wiped out, he's just going out of the way. Sometimes going super, super wide is really good. Sometimes. It just depends on what you're going up against. The main thing to take away from this battle is don't always do the same fucking thing. Alright? When you go up against an enemy Doomstack, you need to treat it like a Doomstack. And confuse the shit out of it. Because they just... He just showed up did not use this very well. Like, if we had been in tight formations, their anti-infantry shots would have absolutely obliterated us, but they spent all their time shooting at stuff that they just couldn't hit. They didn't come into melee with any units apart from the Gorby's Chariots and, um, and Scarbrand. And there we go, heroic victory. It's, it's a shame that one unit got wiped out. I should have pulled it out a little bit sooner, but... Yeah, you know, took them all down. Didn't really do much damage to us at all. And don't forget, the guy who sent this in couldn't even win that battle. But I reckon what he did was was hold a tighter formation. Um, but that would have been really bad because of the essentially the Necrofex Colossus um, style ammo that they have. Would have if it missed the first rank of unit, would have hit the ones behind them. You got to keep in mind as well if you're using checkerboard formation, it's not the be all and end all. Don't use it in every single situation. Um, it's really bad at dealing with artillery. And these guys here are kind of artillery, so you need to use different formations. To handle artillery, you want to spread out as much as possible. Because this was essentially an artillery doom stack. But anyway, there they go. Um, how quickly could we replace that unit? One turn. Okay, so it's not that big of a deal that it got killed. It really isn't. Uh, it loses a bit of experience. But at least you don't have to deal with that. And uh, torture a new technique. And there you go. So, 
again, just to reiterate one more time, this is really, really important when dealing with general tactics. Don't fight every enemy the exact same way. Most of the time, checkerboard formation is really good. But if you go up against something really bizarre, you have to know what those weaknesses are. Single entities love it in a big blob, right? That's where they benefit the most. So spread them out and confuse them. If you can get some of them to run in a different direction like we did there, especially units that just had no ability to fight for us in this battle, it wouldn't be good if they were on a bear. By, by confusing them like crazy, they just weren't sure which spot to attack. If you put all of your forces in one area, they know where to attack. But if you've got heroes over there and heroes over there, spread out units everywhere, they're just not entirely sure what to do, especially if they've got a weird army like that. But anyway, hope that helps you out. That's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys, and we'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.